Can you see it? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew, for the introduction. Thank you all for coming and attend this meeting. It's a pleasure to be here one year more in the summit of energy simulation. My name is Leonardo Guimarães. I am from Federal University of Pernambuco in Brazil. And uh, the, my presentation today will be about uh, coupled thermal hydromechanical simulation of fractures of, of fracture propagation in porous media. In fact, I'm going to present a technique, that, a numerical technique that we are using to our simulations, that is the mesh fragmentation technique, a uh, modification of the finite element method. And then I will show a few uh, cases of fracture propagation in porous media, and specifically a, a, a exercise related to steam injection in, uh, in well bores. So, um, first, a few words about the chair program that we have in UFPE, the, the chair program strategy. Uh, the title of the chair is, is we have a new project since last year. The title of the chair is Reservoir Modeling and Robust Optimizations. There are the, 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 the two main areas that we have there working in, in, in our team. We have we have a big team of more than 50 people working, professors and students. And uh, the main areas of the chair are geological modeling and, and reservoir simulation. For reservoir modeling, uh, we are interested in outcrop character characterization. So we have geologists in our team that are characterizing carbonate and, uh, outcrops as analog of pre-salt reservoirs. We have uh, work on upscaling, uh, geomechanics, carbonating CO2 geochemistry, uh, laboratory testing. We have an, a, a, a lab at our university, our rock mechanics lab, very uh, devoted to these problems of uh, react, uh, CO2 and carbonate reactions. Uh, uh, taking into account the, the, the chemical reactions and the, the, the Chains of par par parameters of the of the rock, and also to complete this experimental work, we have a constitutive model. Also, we have the robust optimization area of our of our, our chair. That uh, the main topics that we are interested again related to the pre-salt reservoirs are WAG optimization, uncertainty modeling, and optimization of, with uh, geomechanical constraints. Uh, of course, uh, we are uh, we are trying to, to to address the problems related to IO, EOR, but also we think that this this the, the proposed uh, research can be applied to CO two injection for storage CCS projects. Uh, uh, and, and in our work, uh, we are really interested in, 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 in studying what happens in a carbonate reservoir when we have injection of CO2, then water acidification, and mineral dissolution, calcite, dolomite, that will change porous permeability of the, the porous rock, but also will affect the strength and stiffness of this material that is the so-called water weakening phenomenon. So this, this was the pre my, my presentation last year. I presented in the summit last year this, uh, uh, many aspects of, of this uh, problem. And uh, in this year, I will show you a specific uh, problem that happened in the north, Northeast uh, Rio, Rio case reservoir in northeastern Brazil. Uh, not, not far from, from Recife. It was a PhD thesis uh, that we have uh, Ricardo Oliveira conducting the, 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 the problem. Ricardo brought us this problem. And we have a very interesting interaction and a very interesting results from this, uh, from this type of problem that we have steam injection. Uh, and this, despite the, the steam injections being a very common technique of enhanced oil recovery, 
that are still challenged and difficult, difficult to, to overcome. We expect, for, for instance, um, in the case in, of, of wells expansion due to stresses, it's an expansion that causes stresses that, that can reach the steel strength limit. And the, in the, for the cement seals, uh, in addition to detachment of the interface, it causes fractures in, by tension or shear. So uh, the objective here is to, is to analyze from the perspective of geomechanics uh, and using the finite element mesh fragmentation. Uh, the, what happens in the well in the near field submitted to steam injection. In fact, we are not dealing di directly with steam inject injection. I'm going to show you an uh, experiment that we have an increase of, of the temperature in the this, in this system. So I'm going to detail the, the, ex the, the extension of the mesh fragmentation technique for tackling no isothermal problems in porous media. Uh, show an application where propagation fractures, in fact, I will show a few applications before this as validation exercise before the, the, this final application that takes through the cement seals of the wells and predict the behavior of rock cement casing system subject to thermal and mechanical loads that are imposed to, on the wells. And we have another student, Cindy Sasa, that is working in the a continuation of Ricardo Oliveira's works in, the, in this topic. The question to be, a, to be a, a answered is what is the behavior of the rock cement case system during the thermal cycle? What is the impact of, of the uh, adhesion of, of material surface? When uh, wheel cracks or detachment occur uh, due to thermal and, high, and mechanical loads, or what is the geometry of the cracks? that you have here, uh, what is the geometry of the cracks and detachments and where they do occur. Uh, the, the, this is a very complex problem. In fact, it is, uh, we have in this problem, formation damage, cement damage and casing damage. For the formation damage, you can have rock dissolutions, change of porosity and permeability, shear strength decreasing and uh, rock compaction. For the cement damage, we can have loss of hydraulic sealing and uh, mechanical instability. And for casing damage, we, we have failure by, caused by fatigue, tension, compression, and shear stresses, and also the collapse or buckling due to uh, lack of lateral support. Uh, the, the work that we are doing is more focused in the damage of the cement due to dilation as the, the, we have materials with different dilation coefficients. Uh, well, the, the numerical technique is based in, in a thermohydro mechanical tool software that was developed initially at Technical University of Catalonia in Barcelona, where the thermohydro mechanical problems are uh, solved uh, fully uh, coupled in a full implicit uh, approach. And after that, uh, uh, myself and my colleagues, Marcelo Sanchez at, at, at Texas A&M and Oswaldo Manzoli at State University of Sao Paulo, I must say that this is a collaboration work between the three groups with different students that implement these techniques for different problems. Uh, Marcela Seixas, Leila Brunet, Pedro Cleto, Michael or Michael Maedo are PhD students of this, these universities that work in the implementation and development of this, uh, of this problem, uh, the mesh fragmentation technique. That, that, that consists in fact in introducing, it's a, a, a simple technique that introduces uh, special elements, right aspect rate of finite elements in between the bulk finite elements. So this method is called the mesh fragmentation technique. It allows incorporating in a simple manner the, the standard finite element programs for geological continuum media the, the, to deal with the presence of discontinuities. So the, a very important element of this model is the isotropic damage uh, tensile damage model that 
we are going to use in the applications. Uh, the, this model introduces the, the tension strength of the material, the fracture energy, and the, uh, the characteristic length of the problem. So these, these are important, uh, the, the, uh, those are important parameters, physical param parameters, and we have also a, a very good control of uh, scale effects. In, in, in other words, we have a, a, a formulation that do not depend, the results do not depend on the size of the, the finite element, the finite element or, or mesh effects. Uh, finally, we have adapted, this was a great work conducted by um, Dr. Michael Maedo, that is finished, that is, he, he, he's already finished his PhD. Uh, he introduced, we, uh, the other students introduced, worked with the displacement jump the, uh, due to the fracture. And Dr. Maedo introduced in his thesis the uh, possible jumps of temperature and pressure uh, when it is necessary for the formulation. So we can hear the mass balance equations and internal energy balance equations for the fractures and for the, the continuum media. This work was already published. and. Uh, this year in rock mechanics and rock engineering, you can find the paper. Uh, and this, this mesh fragmentation technique has been successfully uh, used to model mechanical and hydromechanical problems, uh, such as drying uh, in a crack, drying cracks in soils, fracturing concrete, hydro, hydraulic fracturing rocks. This is the, the, the first application that we we did uh, is, is a, a 3D, 3D modeling of drying cracks in soils and mining waste. This is a, a very well detailed uh, experiment with all the param parameters that we need to, to compose our model of uh, 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 shrink waste, shrink, shrinking of the material due, due to the drying. So we can see here that uh, we have cracks that uh, appears in this mining waste when it's dried. And uh, uh, we can see that the numerical simulation is very, in very well fitted these models. Uh, we can see here that, um, for instance, increasing the thickness of the samples, we have um, la a, a, a lower fracture density. So in, this is in qualitative agreement. Uh, with experiment model and experiments, and uh, for in, uh, we will also simulate uh, problems in the field scale uh, for for expansive clays that are sub, 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 subjected to drying, and we can see here fractures that happens in order of meters that we can also uh, represent in the model. Uh, this is uh, uh, this also is published in the we can we can see here that we have this hydraulic fracture application that we 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 use different meshes to to, to prove that this technique do not depend on the finite element size of this of the in the mesh and we, uh, we can see that we could fit very well the analytical solutions in terms of fracture aperture fracture length uh, pressure changes and the fracture geometry. Uh, we can here compare other numerical solutions and uh, also the, the analytical solutions. And we compare for isothermal problems and non-isothermal non problems as well so that you, with other benchmarks. Uh, another uh, validation experiment for, of this technique is the cooling experiment. This is a laboratory experiment conducted by Shah et al. involving the formation of fractures triggered by a thermal shock in a cylindrical specimen made by, uh, made, made by acrylic with a hole drilled. This is the, the, the acrylic transparent uh, specimen with a hole drilled at the center of the sample. Then we have a, a steel tube in, uh, that was introduced and attached with epoxy to the borehole wall. 
And finally, we, ha we have the uh, liquid nitrogen that was injected, uh, that was injected uh, through the well. And we can see in the figure that the fracture is developed triggered by the applied therm thermal uh, gradients. Uh, we can see here that, uh, that we have ver vertical circumferential tensile cracks due to the circumferential thermal contraction and also horizontal radial planar cracks caused by the longitudinal, longitudinal thermal uh, contraction as well. So this is the finite element mesh that uh, where was used. The, the gray part of this uh, finite element mesh is the is the acrylic that was uh, fragmented. So we have uh, interface elements at each face of the continuum elements here. And we imposed the temperature drop and then measured the external temperature of the sample, and the external part of the sample. You can see here the experimental pattern. The model crack pattern that was uh, obtained varies qualitatively similar to the experiment and the, the model temperature distribution that you can see here, uh, we obtain a, a very nice temperature de distribution that depends on the cracks. Uh, and finally, I would like to show you a few results of Ricardo's Oliveira thesis that is the, uh, uh, related to the uh, steam injection, but in this case, it's a uh, uh, we have the uh, heating in the in the central part of the well. We have the casing cement, so the we have the conduction of the of the heat to through the the, the, the casing cement and porous media. This the uh, this is a simulation of Alawabi uh, test that was performed in, in NTNU in Norway, and uh, we. We can see we can have in this problem that 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 they stress that the well subject to large temperature variations can cause the detachment of the interface. In this case, the interface between the casing and the cement and the, the cement and, and the, the rock. And we can have also the tension damage radial and longitudinal. Uh, and also we can have the fine uh, the shear damage. Ricardo's uh, thesis uh, studied the, the, the possibility of detachment and tension damage. And now we are working with uh, another student, Cindy, PhD students, in the possibility to include the shear in, uh, in, in this, to, to the phenomenon. Uh, in this test, it was imposed as cycles of temperature to very high temperature. And, and, and we discretized only with the fragmented, uh, fra fragmented finite element mesh, only the cement. So only, only this uh, blue part of the experiment of the, of the domain was fragmented. Only, so we are only consider uh, fractures in the cement. And we modeled this, uh, this, this uh, material as in the continuum uh, with the continuum elements for thermal dilation and the interface elements that can uh, account for shear and tensile, tensile strength. Uh, the, those are the results you can see here for the heating phase that we apply in the cooling phase, the eccentric and centralized models that there are the two geometries considered. And we can see here the distribution of temperature, porosity, and stress. We can see here the the in the heating phase is the, the higher temper uh, the higher porosity is, is in the external part of the cement. In the cooling phase, the higher porosity in the internal part of the of the of the cement shield shield. And uh, we can see that we have similar results in terms of uh, distribution of porosity for both eccentric and, and centralized uh, uh, model. But when we try to define a uh, measurement of the, uh, let's say, fracture density, we define a number that we call DT, that is the number of damage, uh, damage elements, interface damage elements, and the number of total ele interface elements. 
So this is a, percent, a percentage that give us the, the density of fractures. And for the same conditions, we can see that centralized model has a lower uh, uh, fracture density in comparison to the uh, eccentric model. We can see here the, uh, let me show you the uh, evolution of radial fractures in the sample, in the cement. And also we define uh, this ratio, at the stiffness of the formation and the cement. And you showed, we show that, uh, in fact, Ricardo showed that, showed that uh, uh, higher the, the, the relation between uh, the youngest models of the formation and the cement, more fractures we are going to have in the cement. And uh, this is the different numerical simulations that uh, we done uh, we, using this technique for different conditions. And we could find these results, these very interesting results. Also uh, in the cooling uh, phase, just to show you the, in the cooling phase, we could also uh, show the detachment of the surface in this case between the uh, cement and the uh, casing. Finally, uh, this is the uh, result of the, uh, just, just, just to, to show you that in the heat phase you, you have in fact, uh, this kind of radial fractures and the cooling phase you have the detachment that you can see here in the experiment. Let me put the pointer. Uh, here we can see, we can identify a few fractures. And also in this tomography image, you can see the, um, we can see the detachment of the surface. And uh, a few conclusions. Uh, well, the general conclusion is that we have a tool that are able, that is able to model uh, different problems uh, in discontinuity um, uh, that introduced the discontinuity in the, in the finite element mesh. This, we have a, a number of uh, uh, validation exercise and, and, and to verify this, this formulation. So a numeric approach based on, uh, on the use of higher aspect ratio elements is, is proposed to model uh, the problem of involving fractures in geomaterials, a distinct, a distinct aspect of this proposed framework is related to the modeling of discontinuities in an entire continuous approach. This means that we can have a, a classical finite element method. We just have to use the, the classical finite element mesh with a, a high aspect ratio elements but putting in these elements uh, the behavior of a discontinuity. So we, are, we, ju we just have to, to change the constitutive model of the, of the element. The, the interface element is, is a classical element using high aspect ratio. It was proved that have the same uh, kinematic as uh, inter classical interface elements. Uh, so the, the standard finite element technology, as I just mentioned, interpo interpolation functions, integration rules are used to tackle involving discontinuities in geomaterials. A scalar damage law that incorporates the soft, uh, softened law that uh, explicitly accounts for the characteristic length of the problem is adopted as a mechanical model. So you don't have, we don't have the mesh dependency that is typically found in this type of problems in pro uh, dealing with fractal propagation. Uh, ex existent experimental data and numerical solutions are adopted to validate the proposed approach, considering the wide range of thermohydromechanical conditions in, in the ground. The performance of the, 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 the new technique is very satisfactory, we, we think. And the model manages to properly replicate, replicate the, the main trends and results involved in the different applications and benchmarks. 
And finally, uh, what do you think as a final message is, well, uh, first, first of all, it is a, a collaborative work between three, three universities for, for a long, long collaboration that I'm showing you. And uh, we think that this is some, uh, some problems that talking with my colleague and friend, Marcelo Sanchez at the Texas A&M, we addressed that we can uh, apply to this, this, this uh, formulation, for instance, hydro, hydro, hydraulic fracturing, uh, as we have fluids that are high pressures in, in, is injected into the engineering well and propagate multiple fractures in a reservoir containing hydrocarbons uh, to increase the connectivity between the wells and uh, uh, reservoir. Uh, in the, uh, Maedo, uh, uh, Michael Maedo showed in his thesis that uh, a very interesting case is, is, is this approach applied to non-isothermal uh, systems as an enhancer geothermal systems, uh, fracture, uh, in this case, you have the, the, the generation of fractures and uh, inside the, the medium and uh, uh, cold fluids are injected, then uh, heat carrying fluid is circulated through the, the, the fracture system to transport heat to the surface and to generate electricity. So we can also apply the formulation for this kind of problem and finally, as we are in the energy energy uh, industry, also high level radioactive waste disposal. In fact, this tool that we are using was, as I mentioned, was built in the Technical University of Catalonia that they work a lot for a long time in this kind of problems that also involves coupled thermohydromechanical process in, in geological media where both pre-existing and involving these continuities may play a critical role in this long-term performance. In fact, in these problems, we have these continuities uh, in the clay barrier used to, for, to, to isolate the system and also in the rust rock, natural fractured rust rock, rock, host rock, rock. Okay, I think, Andrew, that is it. I'm happy to, to answer some questions. Thank you, Dr. Gumeras. Um, we have time for one question. Uh, this is from Mark Joan, um, thank you for the great presentation. Do you solve the thermal, geomechanical, and flow problem fully coupled or iteratively? Question number two uh, uh, from this uh, from Mark as well. Could you please comment more on the way how to deal with the different time scale with all three mechanisms? Well, uh, first of all, uh, we found that uh, we tried a lot to decouple the, the, the problem for fract fracture propagation. Uh, depend on the, 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 the two questions are re really related because depend on the time that we have, uh, the, 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 the time scale of the problem, we cannot decouple. For instance, in the fracture, uh, let me, back in this problem we have it's a really quick problem that is highly highly coupled so it's impossible to decouple in our in our opinion and it's uh, impossible we we couldn't decouple in a, and having the, the same results so it, it is a fully coupled we have in the same jacobian in the same nonlinear system temperature pressures and uh, displacement as variables. So if you, uh, if you have a short, very short thing, the, 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 the phenomena happens in, in a few seconds, you cannot decouple. You, you can only decouple the problems you have two Jacobians, two nonlinear systems, when we have uh, a more uh, long-term problem that we can, you, the, you, you, the problems are not, the, the, the terms of the mechanical changes of the, the, the porosity, for instance, will not so strong in the flow problem. I, I... Okay. 
Um, thank you for the answer. Uh, there's uh, another question about thermal stress cracking and that kind of thing. You could answer uh, on the Q&A uh, chat okay. group. So once again, thank you.